Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Verdi's La Traviata, which was shown last night at the Praha Statni Opera. The conductor was Martin Leginus. The production was done by Arnal Bernal. The sonography was done by Alessandro Camera. The costumes were done by Carla Ricotti. The choreographer was Gianni Santucci. The set design was handled by Patrick Meus. The chorus master was Adolf Melichar, and the dramaturgy was handled by Yitka Slavikova. Now, I'd like to dedicate this review to my kid brother who is celebrating his 18th birthday today. So, you know, if you're watching this, I wish you a very happy birthday. I wish you all the best in your endeavors, and I hope you have fun with this review. So, let's get the production out of the way first. I thought that the production was really lovely to look at. Yes, it may not be totally lavish, but it's lavish in its own special way, as, as in the fact that it didn't need too much color, nor too little. It worked what it had, and let's just say that it worked well in its vantage. And I also liked how it developed from scene to scene. Like, at the first glance, we see Violetta rolling herself in cash alongside her protector, the Baron du Fall. And then in the second act, we see the same white background, but this time it's strewn with, let's say, yellow flower petals. Most likely they're daffodils and any type of other yellow flower. And with Violetta and Alfredo, let's just say, making love to each other. But there's no nudity. So, yeah. And then the third, well, act, or better yet, the continuation of the second act, um, has the serving boys clean up the flower petals, and we're treated into like another scene where Flora has a party, and then in the third act, there are like some of the dressers that are like pulled apart, as to say that Violetta has sold all of her belongings and only has very little money left, and it kind of so like um symbol symbolizes her, well, her death. And before the actual act begins, we see Violetta and Anina in like a separate side of the room, which I thought was pretty creative. So overall, the production really made great use of its color and it was just absolutely nice to look at. And the costumes were absolutely gorgeous as well, as to be expected in any production of La Traviata. So, let's get to the singers, of whom I felt were really decent in their roles, even though they did have a shortcoming here and there. Oh well, nobody's perfect, by the way. So, let's start off with the Violetta, sung last night by Petra Shimkova Alvarez. Now, as I've read in her biography, she, special, she specialized in a lot of the roles of the lyric soprano and some of the light lyric soprano repertoire with a few dramatic coloratura soprano repertoire in between. I thought she was decent as Violetta. Granted, I did not care for her in the first act as I felt that there were moments where she was shrill and she didn't really like have such a great intonation though it was decent at best but she was way better in the second and third acts especially when she had to sing those pianissimo notes very well they were just really well soft she really made the effort to really sing those notes in such a pianissimo manner that it was just actually really decent granted she is a great actress in this role, showing all of Violetta's pain and suffering. And yes, there are moments that she kind of went into a little bit of the verismo territory, even though it's mainly a bel canto role. But she really threw herself in the role in terms of theatricality. Yes, vocally, she could have been better. I was half expecting the E flat to be sung, but yeah, I'm pretty much a sucker for high notes. Can you tell? Well, she may not have the 
agility of Joan Sutherland and Beverly Sills. She may not have that pure tone that made Anna Moffa a very well-loved Violetta, nor did she have the complex coloratura runs and trills and all the type, all those type of um, techniques of Christina Dortekom, but she still handled herself pretty well as a singer. And like I said, she was decent. And sure, she does need to work on her coloratura a lot more, but still, it's a decent performance and it's still well done in terms of theatricality and she really threw herself well in this role. Now, the Alfredo was done by Josef Moravec. Now, as I read in his biography, he seemed to specialize in the light lyric and some of the repertoire of the character tenor roles, like Remandada from Carmen. I, I was kind of skeptical because given the repertoire that he had, I thought he was not going to make it. But I was surprised. I was just genuinely surprised. I also read that he did Alfredo a couple of times, and I was just blown away by his musicality. He had such a wonderful timbre to his voice, and he really seemed to sing all his notes very well. I just wish he could have sung the caballetta O Mio Rimorso. That would have been really wonderful to see, but sadly we didn't get that. I thought it was a shame because, well, he was a great musician. He had a very wonderful instrument, and he really knew how to play along with it very well. I just wish we could have kept the cabaletta so that we could really see how his musicality really was, and not to mention I would have loved to hear him sing the high C. But still, it's a very wonderful job that he did, and... Well, I can't really wait to see a lot more of him. In the role of Giorgio Germont, we have Dalibor Yenis. Now, I saw this baritone about like a year and seven months ago in a production of Don Carlo at the Deutsche Oper Berlin as Rodrigo de Poza. I thought he did very wonderfully. Here, he was just excellent. By far the best performer out of the three main characters. He was his, at his absolute best. And when he had to sing soft, he sang really soft and really lovely. And his Di Provenza il Mar was so touching. Granted, he could have used a lot more shading, but it was still a well-tuned instrument that didn't need to rely on pushing it. And it was just well sung. It was really well sung. No problems with that. No problem with his intonation or diction whatsoever. He sang everything spot on and he acted the character really well. I just wish he could have used a little bit more shading in his Di Provenza e Mar. Like he could have started it a lot softer. But still, it was a very decent performance and out of all the three main characters, I have to say, he was the best performer. Now, with the minor roles like Flora, Anina, Gastone, Giuseppe, Baron Dufol, uh, the Marquis d'Aubigny, Dr. Grenville, and many others were sung by the following Michaela Kapustova as Flora, Erika Vocelova Yarkovska as Anina. Jan Ondrasek as Gastone, František Zar Zaradnišek as Baron Dufal, Milos Horak, who I saw earlier as Laporello, as Marquesa Dovani, Lukas Hinek Krema as the doctor, Stanislav Lehmann as the, commis the commissioner, Giri Hunus as Giuseppe, and Sergei Smirny as the servant of Flora. I thought they sang their roles really well. However, out of all the minor roles, there was one weak link, and that was um, Jan Ondrasek as Gastone. By the time he opened his mouth, I was like, ay, ay, ay. I did not like his tone at all. It sounded 
kind of unappealing. Now, granted, he did play his part really well, but every time he opened his mouth, I was like, oh, goodness. I just wish we could have had a better tuned character tenor singing this part. Like I said, nothing against him, but I'm not a huge fan of his tone. Even though he is a, a very decent musician, I'm just really not a huge fan of, uh, of his tone. It was nasal, on the nas nasal side, which I'm not really a huge fan of. But still, everybody did their part really well, and I still enjoyed it. It was such a treat seeing all the singers do their parts very well. But I have to say that the star of all the main cast was definitely Dalibor Yenis as Giorgio Germo. So overall, despite the few shortcomings that have come from the singers, I have to say they did their parts very well. I liked the production, and the conducting done by Maestro Legenius was just gorgeous. There were not a lot of moments where I felt like the singers and the orchestra weren't being in sync. In fact, they are pretty much in sync all the time. So it was a very decent performance of La Traviata. I just wish it could have been a lot better, but still, it was a decent package. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in later this evening where I review Prokofiev's Romeo and Juliet. So until then, have a great Easter, everybody. Oh, and Eno, once again, happy birthday.